Good evening. Now tonight, we're gonna take a trip. We're gonna travel to some places far away. And we're gonna visit some places close to home. Tonight you're gonna meet some people. You're gonna meet a couple of two or three characters. And you're gonna hear their stories. But chances are, you might even hear a few of your own. It's funny, but it seems that everywhere I go, you're all with me. It seems that uh, wherever I go, there we are. Now some of the stories tonight are true and some are not to be believed. Maybe some of the fun you can have for yourself is deciding which are which. It was the summer of 1978. It was the first summer in years that I decided not to work with my dad and his bricklaying company. I decided to go with a landscaping outfit instead because they were gonna have more work. Since I was getting ready to shove off to college, I was gonna need more money. So I jumped ship on the old man and cut grass. And that's how I met. Herbie. Herbie had these eyes, these Hollywood eyes, like a, like a 1930s film star. Beautiful blue and twinkling, with these soft crow's feet in the wings that gracefully gave way to a touch of gray. But whenever I looked at the guy, it was real bittersweet. I had a theory. I was almost convinced that Herbie had been like abruptly plucked out of his life in the 1930s and set down here in the 1970s and was now the foreman of this landscaping crew in Brecksville, Ohio. A Hollywood handsome older guy with a sparkling wit, yet he showed up every day in a green suit to blow leaves and trim hedges. It just struck me as odd, right? I just want to go on record. <laughs> he invented a phrase I love. The phrase was skating. Skating, isn't that great? Whenever we were gonna blow work off for the day, he'd say, fellas, here's the dope. Today we don't work, today we skate. And we would, the three of us, me, him, and Johnny Spock. We'd spend the day walking along Rocky River just laughing and talking and drinking beers. And Herbie would crack us up, just telling us stories about people he knew, right? But they had these names, these names that evoked images of forgotten eras. Names like uh, Louis the Goose and Young Joe Young. Big band names like Duke Tomato and the All-Star Frogs. Isn't that great? <laughs> Man. Oh, also, on every skate day, Herbie would tuck a silk ascot into his shirt and then just leave it there till he got back to work. It was extremely weird, but very cool, really, if you broke it down. Oh, also, on every skate day, Herbie would effortlessly engage a couple of tomatoes in conversation. That's what he called women, tomatoes. Nuts. Anyway, you should have heard this guy's rap. Unbelievable, man. This cat was so smooth, he was smooth as ice. Ladies, after talking with you for only a few moments, it's become very clear to me that the only thing more beautiful than your eyes is the way that they look at the world. Would you please do me the honor of meeting my two fine young friends here? He'd then pass them over to me and John, and we'd blow it, you know. <laughs> Couple of 18-year-old guys around a beautiful woman, you can't even talk, you end up doing the chicken. <laughs> but we really appreciated Herbie shaking up the snow dome of our day, you know. He never talked about his wife. Apparently she died when they were younger, but you could tell he still loved her. I had another theory. I was almost convinced that she was back there with him in the 1930s. They were a couple then too, you know? Yeah. He's a fish out of water, this guy. Anyway, I'm drifting a little bit. It was, uh, it was the day before we were to leave for college. It was our last day as landscapers and our last day with Herbie. Unfortunately, the shop manager needed somebody to help him do something. So Johnny Spock got shanghaied, leaving our infamous summer trio to sing its swan song as a duet. Now this news seemed to radically affect Herbie. He checked his watch, paced back and forth, checked his watch again, looked at me and said, just you and me, riddle me this, Mac. Are you game for the ultimate skate day? Yeah, gee, I guess. Quick, he says, get in the truck. We pile in, lawn code truck number 1930, the bona fide landscaping truck with Herbie at the helm. All of a sudden, Herbie's Hollywood eyes get a, get a somewhat serious stare. Steve, my young friend, the ice is clear. The Zamboni has come and gone. Today is the day of the great skate. We took the 480 freeway, which was normal, but instead of getting off on Pepper Pike, which is what we usually did, Herbie went on and on and on. Three hours and about six beers later, we found ourselves in Flinthoff, Michigan. Herbie's still not, of course, letting on where we were going, but I really didn't care, you know? It was a beautiful summer day, the beers were abundant, I was getting paid, 
And Herbie was cracking me up, singing all these great old songs. Stuff like uh, The Dark Town Strutter's Ball, An Old Buttermilk Sky. And with every song he sang, my theory got more and more validated. This guy was a transplant. <laughs> we, we got off in this country two lane and about, I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles down the road, there's this great old barn. Do you ever see those barns where they used to paint mail pouch on the side? Really cool. Anyway, Herbie says, come on, chop, chop, get out. We're burning daylight. We walk up this huge grass ramp and we stop in front of the even huger barn door. Herbie looks me in the eyes and says, you know about me, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I got a hunch, you know. You're the only guy in the company who wears an ascot. He smiled a reassuring soft smile and said, I said today would be the great skate, the ultimate skate. Are you sure you want to come along? Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're wigging me out here a little bit, Herb, but, um, <laughs> Yeah. He put his hand on my shoulder, then slid the barn door open. I looked inside and froze. Covered in goosebumps, I stood motionless, unable to grasp what appeared to be reality. Inside the barn, perfectly intact, was downtown Hollywood, 1936. And not a set or a model either, like the real thing in full swing, you know? The street lights, the lampposts, and the buildings. Uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater, Musso and Frank's, uh, uh, the Brown Derby, old drugstores all lit up and running. La Salle's, Studebaker's, and a 1932 Ford Deuce Coupe that wasn't even chopped or anything, just an actual Ford Deuce Coupe just driving down the road, you know? This beautiful little sunny afternoon in 1930s Hollywood bustling inside this Michigan barn. Mailboxes, window dressing, a traffic cop, and the icing on the cake. Ice on the streets. There was a single crystal clear mirror-like layer of ice on all the boulevards and sidewalks. And everybody, dressed in the finest garb of the day, was gracefully skating the afternoon away. How would you like to meet my wife, Herbie asks. Yeah, okay, yeah. Listen, he says, checking his watch. You only have an hour. You've got to be back outside the barn in one hour. If you're not, you'll have to stay there in the past. And kid, trust me, you got too much to do right here, right now. Here are the keys to the truck, son. I've decided to stay this time. I'm not coming back. We hugged. Herbie straightened his ascot, then ceremoniously swung his arm into the barn. I looked down, and as we took our first steps from my world into Herbie's, our work boots magically turned into ice skates. And we softly glided down into the scene.